Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Hubble constant, more from a hmm, conceptual point of view. But let's go back in history, back in 1929, when Hubble, Edwin Hubble, determined an initial value for the Hubble constant. And where did it come from? It came from that linear relationship between the recessional velocity of galaxies and the distance estimated for those galaxies by using the Cepheid variables to try and figure that out. And so, just like we have an algebra equation, y equals mx plus b, and of course, if the line goes right to the origin, we simply say y equals mx, a relationship between the vertical and the horizontal axis, and the slope of that line here, and I don't think I need an arrow there, but the slope of the line is simply equal to the ratio of the rise over the run. It would be the change in y over the change in x. In the very same way, Hubble set up a diagram where he plotted down the galaxies based upon their recessional velocities on the vertical axis and the estimated distance using the Cepheid variables. And again, he realized that there appeared to be a linear relationship between their velocities and their distances. And so, if he then took the ratio of the rise over the run, the change in the velocity over the change in the distance, that constant is equal to the slope of the line. So just like we have y equals mx without the plus b, because the plus b is zero, we have v equals the constant h sub naught times d. The h sub naught is like the m in y equals mx plus b that defines the slope of the line. So h sub naught defines the slope of the line. And so that means that if we know the accurate value of that slope, all we need to do is measure the recessional velocity, which can be easily done by measuring the redshift, and from that we can then easily determine the distance of that particular galaxy. The problem, of course, is that, ac that accurate value for the Hubble constant. Notice that the initial estimate was 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The current accepted value is about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but it's still changing on an almost monthly basis. We've already had thousands of attempts to try and come up with an accurate value for the Hubble constant, and we're still looking for that value. But what does it mean? Well, to, let's say that we live here in the Milky Way galaxy, and obviously our sun is somewhere on one of the spiral arms, about 30,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy, and we look all around us, we see other galaxies that are moving away from us. So let's say there's a galaxy right here that is one megaparsec away. Well, based upon the Hubble law, we then know that the galaxy is moving away from us at about 73 kilometers per second. So, for a galaxy that's one megaparsec away, it will be moving at that speed. Look in the opposite direction, we see another galaxy that's one megaparsec away, it will be moving away from us at a speed of 73 kilometers per second in the opposite direction. So, this galaxy will be moving away from us to 73 kilometers per second, and so will this galaxy. What about a galaxy that's twice as far away? Let's say that galaxy is 2 megaparsecs away. Well, this galaxy will be moving at a speed of 146 kilometers per second. Twice as fast, because it is twice as far. Take a look at this galaxy, it will be moving away from us at a speed of 146 kilometers per second, because it's twice as far away. What about this galaxy, which is 3 megaparsecs away? Well, it will be moving at a speed of, well, add another 73, that would be 219 kilometers per second, 3 times 73, because it's 3 times as far away. And that's what we mean by the Hubble constant. Since it's a constant, we can then rely on knowing how far galaxies are simply by measuring their velocities. So typically, we do it the other way around. We measure the velocity because that's easy to measure. We simply measure the redshift, and from that, we can then calculate the distance, presuming that this is the correct value. Obviously, for example, if it's only 50 kilometers per second, and we measure it to be, uh, and then we measure the velocity to be 150 kilometers per second. Well, let me turn that around again. Let me change it just a little bit. If this number goes up, let's say it's a bigger number. Let's say uh, we'll make the number 100. If it was 100 instead of 73, what would happen? Well, we would measure this to be about 150 kilometers per second, so we would think that this was only one and a half megaparsecs away. 
If this was moving at 219 kilometers per second, we would think it's a little over two megaparsecs away. So knowing the accurate value of this number, the Hubble constant, it will really shift how far things are in our best estimation. And in addition to that, it will also shift the age we have for the universe. And we'll show you how to calculate that in a later video. So again, notice that if this number changes, the estimated distance will change because the slope will change. If we have a steeper slope, things will not appear so far. If we have not so steep a slope, things will appear to be farther. So again, that's the why it's so important to find the accurate value of the Hubble constant so we can really rely on determining the distance to all the galaxies in the universe. And that is what it means when we talk about the Hubble constant. Is there an upper limit to the velocity of the galaxy they've measured so far? Well, if you look far, far away, they move at near the speed of light. Galaxies? But remember, it's not really the galaxies that are moving. We'll get into that detail later. <laughs> That's True. Um, again, there's secondary ways in which we can measure the Hubble constant using far away distances, but we're still really trying to figure out that constant. Right now, we're ranging between 67 and 74, at least for now.